Intro to Logic Part 3, Arguments versus Non-Arguments. We can tell the difference between arguments and non-arguments because arguments make inferential claims, whereas non-arguments do not. An inferential claim is a reasoning process expressed by a passage that a conclusion follows logically from certain premises. So the claim is that the premises logically justify the conclusion. Let's look at an example. Sweet potatoes contain a protease inhibitor protein that can help prevent and treat cancer by inducing cancer cell death and inhibiting cancer cell migration. This is actually true, by the way. But is this an argument or not? The answer is no. It's just reporting information. It's not trying to give any evidence to prove the claims that it's making. So there's no inferential claim. Let's look at another example. Depression has been linked with inflammation of the central nervous system. People with depression should consider eating herbs and spices, which are known to suppress inflammation, such as turmeric, ginger, and rosemary. Is this an argument or not? The answer is yes, it does make an inferential claim. It's trying to justify the second sentence via the first. It's saying that because depression has been linked with inflammation, people with depression should eat these uh, herbs and spices that are known to suppress inflammation. So regardless of whether it's a good argument, it still counts as an argument. It makes an inferential claim. Let's look at some of the types of non-inferential passages. These can include statements and other types of sentences. They're not arguments because they're not trying to prove one statement based on others. Reports of information, advice, warnings, loosely connected statements, illustrations, definitions, examples. All of these do not count as arguments because they don't include proof or justification. Let's go through some specific examples. The 1918 flu pandemic infected about 500 million people. This was about one third of the world's population. That is a report of information. Whether the claims are true or false, they don't try to prove one claim based on others, so it's not an argument. Another example, all living organisms are replicators. Bacteria, for example, replicate through meiosis. Also a report of information with no inferential claim. Another example, you shouldn't buy a Tesla. This is an advice, a piece of advice or a warning, and it doesn't give any proof for that claim. You could make this into an argument by giving premises to support the conclusion that you should not buy a Tesla. A final example, a bachelor is an unmarried male. This is a definition of one meaning of the word bachelor. There's no evidence or proof for it, so it does not count as an argument. Note that there are many other good and useful uses of language other than arguments. Just because someone is not justifying a claim does not mean it's a bad use of language. Sometimes you just need to report information and no justification is necessary. However, if a claim is controversial and not widely accepted by the audience, then an argument should be given. Let's look at some sample problems where we classify a passage as either argument or not an argument. Fernanda doesn't eat pork, beef, poultry, or fish. She must be a vegetarian. Is that an argument or not? The answer is yes, it does count as an argument. The first sentence is being used to prove the second. Because Fernanda doesn't eat pork, beef, poultry, or fish, the argument concludes she must be a vegetarian. This is not a valid argument. It's possible for the conclusion to be false, even if the premise is true, but it's still trying to make an inferential claim, still trying to prove the second sentence based on the first, so that's why it counts as an argument. Another sample problem. I know why Susie quit her job yesterday. It's because she won the lottery. Is this an argument or not? The answer is no. What this is is an explanation. It's giving a reason why Susie quit her job. It's not giving proof that she did. We'll talk more in the next video about the difference between arguments and explanations. Another sample problem. I bet you Susie will quit her job. After all, she just won the lottery. Is this an argument or not? The answer is yes, it is an argument. So if you look at the first sentence, it's making a prediction. I bet you Susie will quit her job. And the second sentence is giving a statement to try to support the truth of that prediction. She just won the lottery, therefore she will quit her job. This is an argument because it contains an inferential claim. Another sample problem. The U.S. should permit more legal immigration. 
Immigrants make an important contribution to the labor market. They start more new businesses than native-born Americans, and they are less likely to commit crimes and be incarcerated than native-born Americans. Is this an argument or not? The answer is yes, it is an argument. It does not include a conclusion or premise indicator word, but the first sentence is the conclusion, and the second sentence is giving reasons in support of that conclusion. So we have a conclusion as the first sentence and premises as the second, and so it counts as a logical argument. Another example, China's economy was able to grow so much in the past 30 years because of the economic reforms initiated by Deng Xiaoping in the late 1970s. Is this an argument or not? The answer is no. It's reporting information which could be true or could be false, but it's not trying to prove one claim based on another. Next up, part four, arguments versus explanations. This is where we give additional information on how to tell the difference between arguments and explanations, which can sometimes be tricky because explanations can include words like because, which are sometimes premise indicator words, but sometimes they're just explanation indicators.